Hey guys, Alan with Telekinesis here for another quick tip. This week we're going to talk about an overview of my entire color grading workflow when I'm working exclusively in Final Cut Pro 10. When we work on bigger projects, we usually take the color grade out of Final Cut into DaVinci Resolve or some other dedicated color grading software. Uh, usually though, for most of what I do, Final Cut Pro 10 actually works really well. So let's dive right in. So the first thing we want to look at is balance color. Now balance color is almost never useful. You can see that's not too bad uh, because we were pretty well lit in there, but you can see it's messing with his skin tones a little bit. And he's got this weird blue thing on his face now. Um, and if you get into some more extreme stuff, like maybe this one, if you balance that, that it's just, it's taking these walls which are warm colored and it's making them to be a neutral gray and it throws everything else off. And that's pretty typical of balance color. It kind of does that a lot. So I actually don't use it very often. <clears throat> it's worth learning the shortcut for though. Once you have a clip selected, balance color, command option B. Where it does work the best is usually in brightly lit sort of outdoor scenes like this. You can take a look at this here and you throw a balanced color on it and that actually looks pretty good. Um, in fact, that is almost exactly the same thing that I did with a manual color grade. So, you know. Match color I actually use quite a bit, especially since I do a lot of work on interview shows where we have multiple cameras filming the same scene. It's a really easy way to get those cameras to match if the operators didn't get their camera settings perfectly in sync. It's also good if you need to match different angles from the same scene in a narrative piece. So if you want to match this shot, you can go right here, match color, or activate it by clicking that. Or my personal favorite, just use the shortcut. Uh, and you want to match it to say this shot right here, you can do that. Now, the problem with this frame is it's trying to match this one to something that has a lot of black in it and so it thinks that things should be darker than they are. Uh, an interesting thing about that is if you go the other way and try to match this frame to this one, that actually works fairly well. Now, again, <clears throat> I use this quite a bit, especially when cameras are pointing at the same object, but you have to keep in mind it's not perfect. It, it doesn't know exactly what you're thinking all the time, so it may not do exactly what you want it to. If the automatic stuff doesn't work, and it usually won't, what you do is a manual color correction. So I'll walk you through my process on that. So let's jump right in and start correcting this. So with our first, we want to do a correction. Now this shot looks a little bit warm, so I'm going to take the global color and pull just a little bit of yellow out of it. You can see I'm at 1% in 58 degrees yellow. I have a couple of keyboard shortcuts set up, so I'm using those. I think I'll pull it out about 2%. And you can see that's, this is much more neutral. This is very close to what the wall actually looks like. This is a warm light bulb, so it looks warm. Skin tone looks pretty good. So we've got our first color correction. Then I use a second color correction, <clears throat> color correction two, and I'll use that to apply a look to the scene. So you can see I'm in here in correction two. You want to make sure you're in that. And then from here we can do a couple of things like feed in just a little bit of teal into the shadows, warm the skin tones up slightly, and that's starting to look pretty good. Now if you want to get really crazy with it, oh, and we're going to also, I think we're going to, yeah, just add a little contrast in by bumping the highlights up. Since nothing is blown out in this shot, we can bump that up a bit. Bring the mid-tones down and just make it a little more contrasty and, and filmic. So once we have an overall look applied, I'll use more corrections to add things like a vignette or make things pop. In this case, I'm going to take Darren's skin tones here and we're going to select them using the eyedropper tool. And that'll give us the skin tones and then shift and add that. And then we're going to use alt, option, sorry. We're going to use option to subtract out some of that wall. So we're really just isolating his skin. So you can see here by what's in color, 
the things that are in color are what's selected and the things that are black and white are not. So you can see that's pretty well isolated on his skin. Let's get rid of a little bit of that lampshade too. Now we jump into this <clears throat> and outside the mask, I'm going to take everything a little blue like that and we're going to expose everything down slightly just to make his face stand out. And then inside the mask, we're going to take everything. Actually, no, we're just going to take the midtones and add in just a little bit of skin tone to just warm him up and make him look a little bit more alive. So there we go. Now we've applied a look. Uh, one other thing you can do if you want to add a vignette, just add one more and then draw a shape. Get that shape nice and stretched out like so. So, and then you're going to want to stretch that out. Let's, let's uh, zoom this out just a little bit so we have a really nice vignette here. And then what we're going to do with this is jump in, go outside, and expose down. That'll darken out. You can see... <clears throat> I'm also going to show you a couple of little tools that I use that are a lot of fun. Um, <clears throat> in the Final Cut Commands menu, and we're going to do a quick tip about this later. If you go to Customize, or just press Command Option K, you can see here in the Command Editor I've customized from the default, I actually have one that I call Alan Edit, and uh, there's one tip in here if you go to Effects in the Command Groups, you can see right here apply color correction from previous edit, three edits prior, and two edits prior. Now, <clears throat> in the default, those aren't assigned to anything, uh, and you can't use them. Now, I have them on control option one, two, and three on the numeric keypad. The great thing about this is you can take these three commands. Once you get into your timeline, if you've got a color grade that you really like, you can assign it to the next one just by setting your keyboard command, using your keyboard commands that you've set up. So in my case, it's control option one. You can see we have that same vignette going on in the corners and everything else is the way I had it set up in the previous shot. So the grade matches. The one nitpick I have about this is it only works in storylines. So if you have two connected clips, like I have this one here and that one there, obviously I wouldn't want to match these, but just for sake of argument, if you go here and hit control option one or whatever you have set for your keyboard shortcut, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't add this color grade that you have to this one. However, if you select both of them and create a storyline, so you make a secondary storyline, so these are the same now. Once you have these in a storyline, you can select this one, hit your keyboard shortcut, and it applies the grade. We're going to take a look at storylines in an upcoming quick tip because they're really useful and super awesome. Anyway, that's my color grading workflow. I hope it taught you something. If not, I apologize. No, I don't. I don't care. Uh, if you have any questions or want future quick tips, leave them in the comments below. Other than that, just stay tuned. More awesome is coming. Thanks, guys. Mm -hmm.